everyone, Renee here with Jade Penguin Jewelry. Tonight we're going to do another crafting video, but it's going to be a little bit different. I've been getting some really big statement pieces out of some recent boxes, like this one here. And this one is wood and it's purple. And I was chatting with my friend over at uh, Her Royal Highness Princess Jewel on, on Etsy. And she told me this reminded her of an Inuyasha necklace. So Inuyasha is a character from a cartoon named Inuyasha. Um, I remember watching some of it when I was younger. I don't know a whole lot about the show, but I did some research on the necklace and she was right. It's very similar to his necklace in the show. However, his is portrayed as the beads being um, the same size all the way around and without these black bracer or spacer beads in it. So. What we're going to do to make a piece for it is restring this. I personally, I like the black beads because I think without it, it'd be very, a much shorter necklace and it wouldn't hang right. And the bones that are on his necklace are teeth. So what I have here are teeth. I have two buffalo teeth for the front, counting his his necklace, the teeth were about five, five beads separated between each tooth. So I'm going to kind of lay it out. So there we have the general idea of what we're going to do for um, Inuyasha's necklace. So what I have to restring it is this tough cord, purple number one. And I have... A needle. So I'm going to ring restring this and then I will be back. I'm gonna cheat a little bit and keep it on the original string and just feed the cord through until I get to where I need to go. Alright, so the Inuyasha necklace is finished. My camera died between this moment and the last moment. Um, so to just kind of recap, I ran the purple tough cord through it, adding the teeth every five of the big wooden purple beads. And then once I got back to the end, I just tied it off here at this last wooden bead on both sides. Alright, so I keep losing connection to my camera, so this might be an interesting video. Anyways, so the Inuyasha necklace is complete. Um, the teeth are on. They're gonna hang out there. It's a very lightweight necklace. So we got that guy done. The neck neck <laughs> neck neck. The next necklace 
that I wanted to make that would be for a costume would be Luna Love Love Goods. Um, The next necklace that I want to make is Luna Lovegood's Butter Beer Necklace. So I don't drink wine, so I don't have any corks about the house. So while at the hardware store earlier, I found that they sell corks individually. This one was 55 cents. And I already had an eye hook available from various other projects. So I just threaded the eye hook into the top of the cork and this necklace I believe if you watch the previous video the blue the Goodwill blue box video I pull this seed bead necklace out of it so what I want to do is I'm just going to push the necklace through the eye hook open it back up and grab the rest of the necklace and pull it through and just kind of loop it on there. I don't want to pull too tight because I don't know how old the original thread is on the necklace and I don't want to risk snapping it. So this necklace didn't come with any sort of clasp. It's just one solid piece of seed bean and string, but that was a really easy necklace to make since I had these items already. Um, if you don't have all these items, I'm sure they wouldn't be too hard to find if you're maybe going to as Luna this year for Halloween and shipping dates are getting a little bit short. Um, just a tube or a bag of blue, blue seed beans, some string, and a cork. And that's pretty much it. It's a really simple necklace and we're done. So I'm going to move that over to the side. And staying in the Harry Potter kind of world, this one is also really easy because um, Hobby Lobby carries these beads. They rotate in and out. And what it is, it's a bird skull. So I'll get that a little bit closer. You guys can kind of see the eye and the side and stuff like that. And what this is, is just a simple black cord necklace, which comes in packs at craft stores as well. So this one's going to be really easy for an additional touch if you're going as Bellatrix from Harry Potter, because you can just, um, Simply run the cord through what would be the ear holes on the neck or on the skull and close that back up. The jump rings don't fit through them. And there you go. For probably less than ten dollars if the brand that doesn't make that makes these isn't on sale. Um you can have Bellatrix's necklace. And I say $10 because if you buy a pack of the cord necklaces, that's roughly $6. And then if you buy the bead, I believe it comes individually. If not, it might be a two pack. Um, that's also gonna be about five or $6. And if you have the coupon or not, or if it's on sale, depending on which craft store you find the stuff at, um, it's going to be about $10 to buy it all new. So there you have it, Bellatrix Lestrange and her uh, bird skull. I think hers is silver. This one's obviously the brass tone, but you know. So that's three necklaces that we've gotten done. Um, another one that I've seen uh, a lot of people make is the earrings and the necklace from Howl's Moving Castle. So I have these giant beads here in this light green color. These are plastic. Um, they're very lightweight. 
and then I have in this random red bean red bead sorry words are hard today um jar I have these red disc beads and those I bought on the strand that I just pulled them off of and these are new pieces as well so this isn't quite upcycling but there are two separate completely separate items that I got so we have some um, bead landing wire and I'm gonna cut a length off And this wire is pretty, pretty soft, but it's not so soft that I'm going to worry about anything that I do with it coming undone. They don't have a gauge on the, the packaging of, or they have the gauge, but like the hardness and stuff like that, they don't have it listed on there. So this one's going to be, again, fairly simple if you have the components. I'm going to take this bead and thinking if I want to double it up or not. I'm going to say not because this is very thin right there. Yeah. So I'm going to edge it towards the side there and then bring it up and right where bring it a little bit closer for you guys right here where I want this triangle of wire to kind of end I'm gonna hold it with my left hand and then I'm gonna take the tail that I have going and wrap it around a few times because I don't want the red bead to be too far away from the green bead okay I can get a little bit there we go and I always like to risk injury to my thumb and run a finger across where I just cut the, the wire so I can um, gauge how much I have to push in to make sure it doesn't snag anybody who's going to wear it next. So there we have this first bit and then we're going to run put the red bead on and have a lot of extra wire to cut off at the end of this let's see where my silver ear wires are here we go We have these ear wires here. I'm going to end up using them. I'm going to grab my round nose pliers. And I'm kind of creeping my pliers up just a little bit until I get the tail worked around a little bit better. So this is going to take some practice making these type of loops. Um, my one step looper isn't always the tool for the job as much as I love that tool. It's not always going to be the one that you want. 
And Grease just came into my head when I said the one that you want. We watched that movie a lot in high school. Okay. So. This wire. And the reason. The reason why the one step looper tool. For this isn't going to be the best tool. Is because of how soft. This wire is compared to like a head pin. Um, so if I was to use the one step looper. To make this top one. It would eventually open just from the person wearing it and then you would lose you would lose your earring off your wire because it's it would just open up and not be there so that's why doing the wrapped loops oops, here we go is the better option for this type of earring work that we want to do right here. So there's the first earring. And if you start to hear snoring, it's because my little dog Winston is behind me and he's fast asleep snoring on his little bed behind me. So we're going to rinse and repeat again. So this, how I'm gauging how far up this triangle is, is that I'm trying to let the wire naturally come together and make a triangle without having it be pinched together really tight or concaved. And just kind of let it do what it wants to do at that point. So now I'm going to wrap it again. And this time it's a little bit harder because I'm using the leftovers from the first wire instead of using the second wire that I cut. So my tail is a little bit shorter. So it's going to be a little bit harder to get it where I want it to be just because I've left less to play with. And again, running my thumb across to judge how sharp that little edge is. I'm squeezing the edge down. Yeah, I got it down. Didn't poke me again. Thread the bead on. I'm going to come back in with my round nose pliers. Kind of just work the wire around where I want it. Okay, that's good. Doing wire work is how you get, at least for me, how I get little notches in my thumbnail. That's when I wrap it around tend to push it with the same spot of my nail and I end up breaking my nails because of that. I'm going to take my needle nose pliers and tuck that tail back in so it doesn't snag and I'm going to grab and open ear hoop a little bit nope okay it still doesn't want to close the way it should there we go Alright, so now we have the earrings from Howl's Moving Castle, sparkly, and hanging out. So here, let's get them on this guy. So we got them up there. They look good. And you can wear them at Christmas too, I guess. 
in red and green and all. So we have that. And to throw one more thing in here, I'm going to do an inspired piece. Um, I like inspired jewelry because it hints at the fandom and it's not a complete replica of like the person's jewelry so you can wear it every day or wear it with an outfit if you're I don't know like going to Disneyland or um, a themed birthday party and you don't want to actually dress up as something so this bracelet like an Alex and Annie knockoff or something. There was a broken charm on it when I got it, so I cut it off and have kept it. So <clears throat> you push the two knots together and it opens wider so you can get it on and then it automatically will go short once it's back on. And if you go back and watch the four pounds of earrings or two pounds of earrings, however much that was, you'll see that I uncovered this earring, which is a spoon in a pan, which is weird. And then I have this charm here. And then I have these um, flower rose beads and some of them have holes drilled in them so I can thread it onto a hoop. I don't think that's going to be the case for the color that I want for this. Okay, there we go. I got at least one. A two. Perfect. We'll use the two. So, if you haven't guessed yet by what I have in front of me, or maybe you can, I'm going to grab the needle nose pliers and open this jump ring and immediately put it over here. So now that guy's there, I'm going to see about grabbing maybe another jump ring. I actually haven't said what the theme is. I just realized that. I'm sure you guys have guessed it. The frying pan and the golden sun and some purple going on in here. But if you haven't, it's a tangled themed or tangled inspired bracelet. So what I'm looking for now is some head pins. So I can put those roses on. There's one. I do have in my charm containers uh, little lizard charms, but they're more <clears throat> gecko than chameleon in shape. So I'm probably going to skip putting Pascal on here. I'll see if I want to do one or two roses. Maybe just one. We'll see how that looks. One might be good. So I'm going to bend this wire at 90 degrees. Move my pliers up the top of the bend and I'm going to roll my wire all the way around and then I have this loop here and if I wanted to this would be the time to take this tail and kind of run it around. This is a little bit harder to do because this is a head pin wire and it's sturdier than 
the previous wires. So that's why it takes oh, a little bit of work to get it to go around, have it look good. Okay, I'm going to trim this. Sometimes they pop off and I like to try to contain a little bit of the chaos when the wire shoots off. I don't have any open drinks today, which is one of my craft room rules because I've had so many little bits of wire go into my coffee from not being super careful. And there we go. We have a Tangled inspired little charm bracelet. I think I'm going to just skip on the second one and keep this first one like this. So I'm going to move those over. So there we go. We got Howl's Moving Castle, Tangled, Luna Love Good. Bellatrix Lestrange, and the necklace that started this whole theme, Inuyasha and his teeth. There we go. So there we have it. Easy ways to wear your fandom or finish off a costume. Um, thanks for joining me. We might do another costume video or an unboxing video next. If you have any inspired pieces you want me to try or any character pieces, um, and I don't know, maybe you want to challenge me and see if I can do something as long as it's researchable and not obscene, um, I can do my best and see what my collection of bits and baubles I have and try to make a necklace. Um, so leave a comment below, uh, like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff if you want. If not, I'll see you around next time and take care, stay safe. Bye.